All right, 97.7 Outlaw Radio FM listeners, you already know what time it is. We are back alive in full effect, and we actually have New Jersey's finest. We have the iconic, the legendary Lakim Shabazz of the the original Flavor Unit right here live on the line, man. How are you doing this evening? I'm great, man. Magnificent. I would like to uh, thank Outlaw Radio for having me, and I would like to thank all the fans for their patience because we supposed to got this going previously. However, some things happen, yet uh, we here now, and um, it's my pleasure, you know? Hey, man, like they always say, good things come to those who wait, man. And I got to say, it's definitely an honor just to have you live on live on the FM dial here in Canada this evening. I appreciate it, you know, I appreciate to be there, you know, and um, I heard that term you say, they say, good things come to those who wait, but I'm going to tell you, don't wait on nothing, man, because our people been waiting too long for mysteries and all types of things, whatever you want in life, you got to go out there and get it, yet I understand what you're saying, though, <laughs> patience is a virtue. We must all learn and gain patience and teach others with patience, but I'm not going to wait for nothing to happen, I'm going to get out here and make it happen. This is how we make history, you know? Some people like to renew history. I'm not into that. I'm into making history every day. And speaking of making history, man, I want to take you back to the very beginning of your iconic career. And I have to ask, what actually made you decide to actually pursue a career in music, man? Because you are so natural at what you do, man. On the microphone, you're so gifted and talented. Well, um, hip-hop was like, when hip-hop came around... It was like a new genre of music. It just took us by storm. The first uh, riff I got of hip-hop was through Sugar Hill Gang. When that song came out, Rapper's Delight, that changed the demographic. I mean, I had to be around 11 years old when I heard Rapper's Delight. I wasn't really interested in rapping at that time. Back then, um, growing up in North, you had a lot of DJ crews. I uh, got into DJing at a young age, and we used to, used to spin uh, disco music, which eventually grew into what they termed to be house music or what have you. Uh, that's always going to be a love of mine, per se. I grew up in that era where you had a lot of DJ groups, and they used to bring out sound systems or what have you. You figure uh, around the time I was in a... Uh, the eighth grade, uh, rap music really started brewing. I mean, you, uh, once Series 5 came out with, uh, what was that? Um, it wasn't the message. It was before the message. Um, wow, I can't even think of the name of the song. But anyway, what caused me to pick up a mic was uh, actually my cousin. My cousin and the brother who eventually became my DJ, DJ C. Just. I used to hang with this guy that used to MC. yet I used to DJ. I was never into MCing. And one day my cousin asked me to to write a rhyme, and I went back and forth with him telling him I'm not into that. And he was like, yo, just write a rhyme and kick it, and we'll tell you how it sounds. I did it. My DJ liked it. My cousin LaMel liked it, and I've been rhyming ever since. And also as well, um... You first gained recognition when you actually provided vocals for the 45 Kings, the nine, the, the 900 number. I was wondering if you can tell us a bit more about that partnership. And, of course, how did you originally get connected with 45? I got connected with 45 King. I first met him when I was around in the ninth grade through this guy. Uh, by this time, I was MCing all throughout high school. And it was a guy around my way that I... um connected with, he knew that I rap, he rhymed, or what have you, and he kept telling me about this guy named Mark that lived up the hill from us. At this time, I lived in Irvington, New Jersey, and Mark uh, was staying on, on Stuyvesant Avenue in Irvington, New Jersey, and he was like, Mark, DJ, yo, you know, we could go over his house, man, he real nice on the wheels of steel or whatever, so they took me over his house a couple of times, and um, that was my first encounter with him, I didn't ever rhyme for him, but I got a chance to see him in action, DJing. Fast forward, uh, I graduate from high school. By this time, I'm rhyming. Me, I was in a crew. By this time, I had been battling groups or what have you. And I graduated high school, 86. I started uh, being managed by this brother named Abdul. I had already met Mark previously, years before that. Abdul started managing me. He takes me back to 45 King with a demo. 
so I had to remind Mark that I had met him previously. Um, he worked. Uh, he liked the demo that I had with Abdul. Things didn't work out between me and Abdul. That never worked out. Uh, fast forward from 86 to 88. By that time, um, I'm just running around with my cousin, LaMel. LaMel uh, introduces me to Biz and Cool V. And this was at a time when uh, Biz and them were working on the Vapors album. I was actually uh, with Biz and Vaughn. And um, I think if Biz wasn't working on the Vapors album, I probably would have ended up with them. I may have been in the Juice Crew or something. Who knows? But anyway, I was under Biz and Vaughn, and I asked Vaughn, did he know 45 King? Because at this time, you know, it was... Uh, 88, I'm hearing uh, 45 King beats on the radio. I'm hearing different skits with Chill Rob and Red Alert. And I'm like, yo, I want some of that. And I would rhyme for Biz and Vaughn, and they were impressed. But he told me he was working on his album and he ain't really had time for me. So um, he connected me with 45 King. I called Mark. I went to see him, and we've never severed our relationship since then. And I got well, credit Cool V and Biz for linking me with 45K. Yep. And I got to say as well, that, that right there is the true definition of uh, third time's a charm, man. You know what I mean? That right there, that partnership was <laughs> definitely destined to happen. Yep. And uh, to this day, man, I mean, me, Biz, Vaughn, Juice Cool, we was all like tight, man. Like Flavor Unit and Kane, all of them, you know, whenever they would perform, Biz and them had a show, they would always let us know. Me and Apache was always there, you know. I even rocked at uh, one of Kane's birthday parties. You could type that up on YouTube, lock him Shabazz freestyling at Big Daddy Kane birthday party. Because we was tight with them, you know, to this day. That's my man. I love that versus, too. I still feel like Kane won. I love Chris, too, but I feel like Kane won that. That's just my opinion. <laughs> and while we're actually on the topic of 45 King as well, in the year 1988, you actually released your album Pure Righteousness. I was wondering if you can tell us the story behind that iconic record, and of course, what was it like having the 45 King actually producing your, your legendary project? Well, I was young, you know what I mean? I was uh, 20 years old. Um, 45 King name was brewing on the radio, so it was definitely a pleasure to be with him, but he more so was like a father figure to us. And um, I didn't really look at it as a real big thing. My thing was just wanting to have a record out there. You know, a lot of people I knew had records playing on the radio, so I knew 45 King stuff was being played on uh, Hot Night. I mean, not Hot Night, but back then it was Kiss or Red Alert. And um, it was just... Uh, a happy thing, man. I was grateful to be in that situation. Uh, the process of that album came together real quick. I didn't even really concentrate. We actually finished that Pure Righteousness album in about three weeks. He'll tell you that, too. <laughs> we went through that album real quick. Yep. And if you listened to that album as well, you wouldn't even notice that it only took three weeks. Yeah, we went through that album real quick. He had the beats. He was like, you got a alarm for this song? I'm like, yeah, boom, you knock it out. Yep. And I got to say, my favorite joint off that record will always be The Posse is Large, man. I love the beat, how like the moment you put it on, the beat just hits. The beat just hits you on that. Well, that's the well, the 900 number. Well, that's classic, you know what I mean? Mark, that's one of the beats that made Mark famous right there. Definitely. The 900 number, and I think I'm the only MC to ever rhyme to that before my man um, from D.C., you know, flipped it. What's his name, DJ? Um, the guy out of D.C. that used it. Let me clear my throat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he got, he, he used it, 900 number, you know. Yet, um, that was cool, man, to be able to rhyme off of that back then. Definitely. Yep. And also as well, as we already know, you are one of the uh, founding members of the original version of the Flavor Unit. I was wondering if you can actually tell our listeners a bit more about that. And of course, how did you actually meet the other members of that iconic group? I met all of them through uh, 45 King. When I first uh, linked with him, I used to visit him. And at times I would go there, it would be these guys there rhyming. One time I went there 
you know, it was three people there, and they were on the mic, and Mark was playing beats, and I didn't know them. Uh, and they all sounded dope, though. So, um, it was actually Apache, Chill Rob G, and Apache's cousin, Lord Ali Bosky. And Mark had a beat playing, and everybody was taking turns rhyming. So they uh, looked at me like, yo, you the new dude, right? <laughs> and I'm like sitting down in the corner, they like, yeah, yo, let me hear you split something, you know, let me hear you rhyme. So I got on the mic and I rhymed, and that was my relationship with them three. And then eventually, from uh, just visiting Mark, I eventually met Latifah, Lati, and everybody else, because we would all come to 45 King's house and just. Uh, sit down there, kick it with him, burn out trees, write rhymes, everybody with practice rhymes and things of that nature. And that's how, you know, actually how it all came together. I was actually the last original member to come in tune with the Flavor Unit, actually. And I was wondering as well, like, what, what is one of your most fondest memories you shared with that group? Because there, there were so many members that came and went throughout the years. But like you said, you were one of the last, you were the last original member. Well, one of our fondest memories, I got so many that um, one of the uh, one of my fondest memories was when we was filming um, what's that uh, dance for me video, La Tifa's dance for me video, the time we played a uh, Flavor Unit baseball game, all of us had on Flavor Unit jerseys. It's so many memories, man. It's like you know, iconic, you know, definitely the filming of Latifah's Dance With Me video, yeah, and Lady First, yeah. We was a tight-knit family, definitely. And I gotta say, you guys definitely had some phenomenal chemistry as well, working together, man. It definitely must have been some iconic and surreal times just to be an MC, especially in the in the state of New Jersey. Yeah, I mean it was it's very it was very competitive and um to be with Flavor Unit was a privilege for me cuz uh, when I got with them you got to understand I was already hearing Chill Rob on the radio Lati joint this cuz got Flavor was out already um I heard a joint with Apache and uh, a lot of people don't know Nikki D is original Flavor Unit she was around uh, Latifa was there, so you know it was a it was a great thing, man. Great experience. I love and miss Apache to the core. Anytime I pick up the pen and write around now, Apache is criticizing every word. That's my man. That's my partner in rhyme right there. So you know, I keep him alive. Anytime I rhyme, and I still rhyme, still write. You know, still working on some treats to give to the world. I feel like the world needs me. <laughs> Also, as well, two years after your first record, you actually dropped the, uh, another legendary project by the name The Lost Tribe of Shabazz that actually peaked at number 78 on the top R&B and hip-hop uh, albums. I was wondering if you could uh, shed some light on that iconic project. And, and if you don't want me asking, well, why wasn't there ever a third solo album? I never did a third album with uh, Tough City because um contractorial problems. I don't want to go into depth about that. But, uh, that was something. It took me a minute to get away from that situation. However, um, the Lost Tribe of Shabazz album, that was centered around me. I always wanted to uh, do a video in Kenneth. Me having knowledge of self, I always wanted to show the world some of the wondrous things that we built. You know, regardless to what people may think or believe, these things were built by original people. It's, uh, you know, and I wanted to go over there to showcase that to the world. Lost Tribe of Shabazz, that title comes directly out of the teachings from the Nation of Islam. You know, um, yet, um, that was a beautiful project, man, and um, to have gone over there, when I went over there, it was a beautiful thing. I was in three parts of the country. I was in uh, Cairo, Luxor, and Aswan. To be there, to uh, film a video floating down the Nile River, that was iconic, man, you know? Definitely. Definitely a staple in my life, a staple in hip-hop. This is a staple in music. I think I'm the only artist to ever do that, to ever film a video in Kemet. 
And I gotta say, I definitely agree, man. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I can't think of any other artist that actually did do anything like that. I don't that. think, I don't think so. I mean, I don't think no one else has done that. I've seen videos of, you know, uh, Egyptian landscapes and things of that nature. Yeah, that video was raw footage. I was really there. <laughs> you know, I can't sugarcoat it. You see different scenes of me in that video sometimes in dress with the traditional garment that the people over there would wear would get. There are a couple of scenes with me with just a black T-shirt on and a hat and I'm kicking it in front of the pyramids. So, you know, I just wanted to showcase that to the world. But um, that album was um, meaningful to me because I got to showcase a little of my production skills. I actually produced Need Some Loving. That was like one of the first songs I ever got a chance to produce. So... Yeah, that's, that album was meaningful to me as well. But I never did a third album with Tough City because of contractorial problems. However, I did record at least three albums worth of material when I was on Tough City. You know, you could go through Tough City archives and find a lot of different songs and little snippets that I did when I was with that label. Yet I have no hard feelings or anything like that. I'm grateful because my name is still known. Uh... People recognize me in hip hop. I'm in the hip hop Hall of Fame, and I'm gonna keep teaching civilization to the uncivilized. My reward is the smile on the children's faces. I keep my eyes on the prize, the youth. You know what I mean? And that's what my music did: teach and cause thought, uh, positive thought. You know, that's my thing. I want to cause you to think. I want to bring you back into your own. So I know through music, people are in tune, rhythms, you know what I mean? So I'm going to give them the rhythm of self through my music. And if I could uh, spark positivity in the people, I did my job. And so far, I've been doing that. So I'm grateful, you know, definitely. For Flavor Unit, 45 King, I'm grateful for Tough City Records, grateful to still be here. Definitely. Yeah. And also as well as well one year after uh in the year 1991 you were actually featured on a fellow New Jersey hip hop trio Naughty by Nature's self-titled album on the song 123. I was wondering how did you actually get connected with Naughty by Nature and of course what was it like just being in the studio working with them? Well, wow, that's uh that's another memorable aspect of Flavor Unit um we actually linked up with Naughty through them. Well, actually, they were a group called New Style, and they came over to visit 45 King and dropped some music off to him a couple of times. So when we would come to 45 King and visit him, um, he would play some you know, different stuff from them. And I liked it immediately. He played this one joint called Smooth Mood. He played another joint. Now, these were songs that they had recorded while they were the new style, and I think they were signed to a label called Bone and Me Records. They were living in East Orange, and uh, they were dope. That's all I can say. So, um, after we heard um, Smooth Mood and a couple of songs, and we, you know, asked Mark, well, where they from? They from East Orange. Eventually, me and Apache started going over there, linking up with Tretch, and the rest is history. That's how that came together, and, um, you know, working with them was just a beautiful thing. Even throughout the process of their second album, um, we was in the studio a lot, you know. Pac used to come to these sessions a lot, too. And I have to ask as well, when you actually had the opportunity to meet Tupac at that recording session, if you don't, if you don't want me di diving into this, like, what was it like just being able to be around him? Well, he was cool. Pac was funny. Pac was the type that, even back then, like, he, I don't think, at that point, he wasn't in no movies at that time. And him and Latifah was all, like, when we would chill or whatever, we in the studio or whatever, they were very good at imitating other actors and stuff. And I always always tell Pac to do Scarface, and he used to always talk like him, like it wasn't nothing. And I knew it. I was like, yo, he got the acting in him. And Latifah was very good at it, too. She could imitate, uh, 
Caribbean woman, anybody, you know what I mean? So I knew they had that niche in them. But um, being around Papa, he was just cool, man. He was just like one of the other brothers, you know what I mean? Word up. Because we had, um, actually, I think we met Pac through being cool with Digital. Latifa went on tour with Digital Underground. And I think um, Latifa, Apache, and all of them had met Pac through Digital. And Pac had got cool with Tretch, and whenever he would come out this way... We would definitely kick it with him. Definitely. Pac was very cool. Actually, um, even on the set of Juice, because I was in the movie Juice a bit, uh, they had uh, cut the part out, though. Yet, um, one time we was up there on the set, me, Tretch, and Pac was in the trailer chilling, definitely. So I knew Pac, and it was cool to be around him. I didn't look at Pac like how a lot of everybody else be all, oh, too Pac, nah, he was just like, one of the dudes, you know what I mean? <laughs> he was just cool. Definitely. And then he blew after all of that. You know, my relationship with him, he was like, wow, this Tupac, I peace. You know what I mean? He was in the studio with us. We, we cool. Man. And this was before Juice, before the movies, before he really blew. He had his verse on digital joint, same song. We liked him from that. Me and Apache. And I remember the same song as well was actually featured in a uh, uh, a movie uh, called Nothing But Trouble. Uh, Chevy Chase was his name. That's the guy I was originally trying to bring up there. Mm -hmm. uh, but also as well, oh, man. you actually had the opportunity to work with a legendary MC and producer, Diamond D, in the early years of his career. Uh, I think it was before he actually had the opportunity to actually blow up. I was wondering if you can tell us a bit more about that partnership. And, of course, what was it like just working with him so early on in his in his career? Diamond is my man. Um, when Diamond came out, he had this song. Um, he had produced that joint um, with him and I think, uh, I forget the name of the group. Yeah, he had a song out. That joint right there. When that song came out, I liked it. We actually had a show. And um, from that beat, man, I wanted to meet him. And once we met, we connected, exchanged numbers. And um, the relationship just grew from there. I would uh, actually go visit Diamond a lot when he was working on his first album, his first two albums, I was around Diamond a lot, you know, because I started digging in the creeks. I learned a lot of production tricks from being around him, from seeing Mark produce beats and me being a DJ before I ever picked up the mic. I started venturing into producing beats or what have you. So uh, that's how me and Diamond D's uh, relationship grew. You know, and I got roots in the Bronx as well. All throughout high school, I used to spend a lot of weekends in the Bronx with my man Dink. So, um, linking with Diamond was a beautiful thing, man. Him being from uh, the South Bronx and uh, having these records, and uh, I loved his ear, I loved his beats, I loved the way he cued his kicks and snares, and I knew it would be a beautiful thing because um, 45 King was fond of him. And I knew he was around Jazzy J and the rest of them, so that was iconic for me. And I I actually met Laura Finesse before I knew Diamond. That's the funny thing. I, my relationship grew close with Diamond, but I met Finesse before I knew Diamond. <laughs> I met Finesse in Calliope Studio, yeah. and then I met Diamond after that. But me and Diamond's relationship grew musically. And to this day, me and Diamond's relationship is still tight like that. I still discuss beats and stuff with Diamond. <laughs> Definitely. Yep. And also as well, I, I, in the song Rap God by Eminem, he actually called you a rap uh, personality who influenced him. I was wondering, what did you think when you first heard that song? And of course, how does it feel to know that you sparked the generation that came after you? It felt great, man, to know that, you know, my music influenced someone like him. You know what I mean? People look at him as like one of the best that ever did it. And for him to mention my name on the song, you know, it felt great. It let me know that somebody took heed to what I was saying. You know what I mean? Not only, you know, from the responses that I've gotten from performing and things of that nature, but, you know, 
for someone like Eminem to say that, that was cool. Not only him, Nas mentioned my name on the song, song called Where Are They Now? He mentioned me. For anyone who's ever mentioned me on the song, I appreciate it. They keep me alive in hip hop. You know, yet, um, that feels great, though. Not only that, M has mentioned me in interviews I've seen. You know, he gives me props as an MC, so that's uh, nothing but love right there, you know, and it makes me feel great. It makes me feel appreciated. It lets me know that, you know, people are listening. And did you ever have the opportunity to meet Eminem throughout your career? Since he's showing you so much love, did he ever actually reach out to you personally? Nah, I never met him. Actually, um, one of my brothers was one of his personal bodyguards. He went home, though, a few years ago. This brother named C.I. Kill, and he was striving to bring that together. Yet I haven't met him physically. You know, I know people that know him, that have been amongst them. I met my people's been find a couple of different people. Yet, no, nah, I haven't met him. I would love the pleasure to meet him, though. Because he definitely mentions me, you know. Furthermore, they um they played a clip of Lost Tribe of Shabazz on Raising Canaan. I'm like, maybe M got something to do with that. He connected to 50. <laughs> Not only that, they played um, Hands of Fate on Raising Canaan. So I'm like, wow, that's something. I don't know. Yet I appreciate it, you know what I mean? Definitely appreciate it. It lets me know the people in hip hop somebody recognize me. So, and also as well in the year two thousand fifteen, you were actually featured on the Shady Corpse track titled "Lost Souls." I was wondering if you could tell our listeners a bit more about that collaboration and what was it like working with that Eminem tribute group. Well, I didn't know that that was an Eminem tribute, so that was uh, the joint with Pace, right? Uh, yes, Pace. No, I, I, I wasn't, you know, my verse wasn't directed towards anyone. Um, Pace just reached out to me and said he had uh, one song, one slot left for his project, and he wanted me on it. So, you know, um, he had just asked me to spit a verse for the song. Yet I didn't know he was, you know, directing that song towards anyone in particular, what you, but... Um, I have a relationship with the outs. I mean, most of the MCs from the Jersey area, from the North area, Essex County, Irvington, East Orange, we all know each other. So it wasn't nothing for me to work with Pace, Z, any one of them. You know what I mean? It's all love. Lords, Red, anybody from this area. You know, that's one thing about us. Well, most of the MCs from this area, we ain't never had no, you know, no grudges against one another. We could always come together and do a, a devastating project. The MCs from Essex County, you talk about you got a lot. You know, you're talking about outsiders, Lords of the Underground, myself, Lordy by Nature, Queen Rock People, Fuji's, it's a lot of groups from the Essex County surrounding area. So, you know, if you think about a dynamic hip hop project featuring that core of Jersey groups, could do something dynamic, you know. But I have to ask, what is next for yourself, Lakim Shabazz? Because I, I know we only touched base on like a, a sliver of your iconic career here this evening on the radio station, but is there anything that I happen to miss? Anything else you still want to talk about or promote? Well, we still got you here live on the Canadian Airwaves this evening. Nah, well, what's on my list is teaching. That's my thing. Continuing to teach civilization to the people out here who are uncivilized, keeping my eyes on the prize, and that's the youth. As far as musically, I'm going to release some treats on the world very soon, definitely. So that's all I'll say to that. But no, there's nothing much I wanted to touch upon. Like I said, I'm grateful for this interview. I'm grateful for all the listeners at Outlaw Radio for y'all wanting to interview me. And, you know, other than that, you know, everything is peace over here. I don't have really nothing to promote like that. Nah. Just keep your ears and eyes open. The music will be coming soon. But also I'm like contacted here. with y'all, so I'll let you know. Definitely. Hey, most definitely. And when it does drop, I will make sure that I actually spin the records here on the radio station Airwaves as well. You know, you can't you can't have a hip-hop radio station without Lakim Shabazz and heavy rotation. 
<laughs> well, I appreciate that. Well, I'll make sure you get it, definitely. But also, like him, before we part ways, man, I was wondering if you can, if you can drop your social media handles, that way our listeners can follow you and stay updated on everything you got going on, if they're not already doing so. Well, most of the people know it's um, I'm on Instagram, it's Lock Him the Pinnacle on Instagram, and on Facebook, you can follow me at Lock Him S. Welch, and anything I got going on will be on there. And I got to say, first and foremost, man, thank you so much for just giving us a little bit of your time here this evening and sliding in into the FM FM airwaves this evening. I got to say, I've been a fan of yours for many, many years. So just being able to converse with you and just interview you on my radio station is truly an honor. And I got to say, thank you for making monumental music that not only myself, but so many listeners worldwide had the opportunity to enjoy and just touch them in, in so many different ways, man. So for that, thank you so much, and I'm definitely looking forward to years more of iconic music. Thank you. It's my pleasure. I appreciate it. And like I said, keep your ears and eyes open. It's coming, definitely. I got to say, I'm most definitely looking forward to that. But definitely have yourself a wonderful night, and most definitely thank you so much again, like him. Likewise, I like to say peace to all the gods and the earths, peace to man, woman, and child. Y'all have a lovely evening. Peace, Outlaw Radio.